felt good, pretty good the other day. My my son Matthew says, "Oh, I'm watching this guy on YouTube. He's got he's got like he's just you know only been out for a couple of years. He's already got ten thousand subscribers." And I was like, "That's sweet." I said, and then I was like, "Did you know we have your dad has five thousand subscribers?" He was I don't know. He's just like, "What? Do you really?" I said, "Yeah, we do a, a daily Bible study. <laughs> it's called Wake Up." <laughs>
And uh, Lot, Abraham's uh, nephew, is is has lives. He lives right. in that area. He chose. He chose that life. So so angels come and grab him. Right. You know, Peter talks about it. They they came and grabbed and called him a righteous man. And Peter, yeah, so it came and grabbed the righteous man who was sitting there looking at and appalled by the behavior of the city. And but it says it this way in Genesis chapter nineteen, in verse fifteen, the angels came. And they were going to get Lot and his family out of the city because fire was coming. Yeah. With the coming of dawn, the angels urged Lot saying, hurry, take your wife, your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished. Verse 16, when he hesitated, Lot, Mm -hmm. the men grabbed his hand and the hands of his wife and his two daughters and led them safely out of the city. So they led him. Do you see that? God sent the men long before the destruction was coming. Right. God grabbed the family and led them out of the city and right. saved them from the fire. So the fire's coming. Sometimes we have fire in our lives. We do. Sometimes the business that you've been running and starting, it catches on, like it's just on fire, man. It does. Expenses are getting out of control. You don't feel like you have money. You're going to be able to make it another week. Maybe a lawsuit comes against you. Sometimes your family is on fire. Right. Right? The kids are going the wrong direction. Uh, you don't know what's going to happen in your marriage. You're 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 not sure how you're going to get through this. You're right. trying to get to the other side. You, you're trying to escape the flame, but you're not sure. But God says this: I'm going to go before you. Right. We have to learn how to trust that God has gone before us. That where the the direction that we're going, the the places that we are, we need not be afraid. Don't let fear enter into your heart at all. But simply recognize that God has already gone before you. He says, I will consume your enemies with fire. And he says that, that he will destroy and clear a path. He is our way maker. He's the maker. Yeah. The maker of the way. Yeah. And so he'll find a way to make a way. Yeah. And oftentimes I think that we kind of see there is no way. I think that we can get into that place where there's no way out. You know, I talked about that with Elijah, where you just get broken and you're like, okay, there's no hope. But God is the God of hope. He is the God when you hit the bottom that wants to take you to the top. He's the God that in the midst of your storm, Jesus was in the boat. And they said, well, don't you care that we're going to die? Mm-hmm. And Jesus is like, stop being afraid. Yeah. Well, that's, stop being afraid. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of you. I'm in the boat. And I think that we got to stop being afraid. Mm-hmm. Stop worrying, being full of stress and anxiety. Well, I don't know what's going to happen with the business. Just trust that God's going to find a way. Yeah. Just trust that God's going to find a way in your marriage. That God's going to find a way with your teenager. God's going to find a way with that, that child that you haven't talked to in four or five years or whatever might be going on. God's going to find a way to bring that spouse into your life. God's going to find a way. And if I trust in His way, then He makes a way. Yeah. And the Bible says that he was a righteous man. And you think, well, how was he righteous? But isn't that the same way that God views us? Like we have... Christ in us, and so Christ declares us righteous. And so, you you know, you could look from an outside perspective and say, you know, Lot kind of had it coming. He did. Yeah. But that's not how God viewed it. And so how does God view you? He's going to save the righteous. And so, you, you know, you when you receive Jesus, you have to recognize how God sees you. He sees you as the righteous. Now, He didn't promise there wouldn't be storms. He didn't promise there wouldn't be fire. And sometimes we get ourselves in our own mess. But we have to recognize that God has not abandoned us. He's not leaving us out to dry. He's not turned his face away and forgotten about us. He, it's not that He doesn't know what's happening in our lives, but He's with you. And he's even he's gone. In the fire. And he's even gone in front of you. He does. He lights up that path. He opens up some doors. And in the midst of it, it does strengthen us sometimes to go through the fire. You know, you take metal, you got to put it through some fire for it to get stronger. Yeah. And I'm not saying that God put you in the fire, but I'm saying that the fire that happens here on Earth oftentimes makes you stronger. Yeah. You can handle more. You can do more. God can begin to give you more that uh, you can carry Yeah, because you've been through a fire. I've, I've had a Harvard education when it comes to business because I've been through the fire. I have been through 15 <laughs> businesses of fire yeah, yeah. and fire. But you know what it did is it made me stronger so that one of the businesses there at the end could explode and become great. Well, it's just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The Bible says that their ropes burned off their yeah. wrists. So they, they were tied up. So God, the same fire that was meant to destroy them set them free. 
<laughs> Isn't that and awesome? God, good. Father God, we just thank you and praise you, Lord, for everybody that's watching this. I thank you, Lord, that, that you are showing them that you already have gone ahead of them today. Whatever they're up against in their jobs, the presentation that they have, the things that they're, they're looking forward to in their businesses, Lord, whatever, whatever their day has for them. Lord, that you show them that you've already gone ahead of them, that you're leading the way and that you're with them. You'll never leave them. You'll never forsake them. That they can walk confident knowing that success, favor, the Bible, Lord, your Bible says that your favor has surrounded us like a shield. That they're walking in a, in a God tank as they move around through their day, Lord, that they recognize that you're with them and they cannot possibly fail. In Jesus' name, amen. Watch this clip. How many know that the Lord has gone before us? The Lord is much more powerful than even Nobert is, and he gets out in front of you. I want us to say this phrase today, I am not afraid. Today the Lord is going to be dealing with fear and pressing fear out of your lives. And he's going to do it through this one simple promise that I'm going to read to you right now. In Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 30, it says, The Lord, your God, who goes before you, he himself will fight on your behalf. We have to know that our Jesus has gone ahead of us into whatever it is that we face. He's already been there. When he got out of the boat, and Peter, or when he was walking on water and Peter got out of the boat, we have to recognize that when he took that first step on the water, Jesus was ahead of him. Jesus had already walked on the water ahead of him, simply calling him out to do something that Jesus had already done. There was 12 disciples in that boat, at least, and only one saw the opportunity to stand up and walk on the water, who got out of the boat and took a step of faith. What is it that keeps us from taking that step? I don't want to be a Christian like the other 11. I want to be a Christian like Peter, who says, Lord, call me out, and I know that I can walk on the water. If it's really you, Jesus, I want to step out with you. We follow a Jesus who goes before us, shows us the impossible, and then calls us to take a step of faith. We don't serve in a Christianity that is designed to accept mediocrity, average, lack, these things are the products of fear. You know, when I stay in the boat, it's because I was afraid. I saw the waves. I thought, well, I can't walk on water. Maybe Jesus can, but I can't do it. And I stay in a position of lack. Satan wants to use fear in your life to keep you stuck, to keep you from stepping into something new, from awakening a new dawn or a new start. He wants to keep you in that tent in the wilderness. Here, you can be safe and warm with just enough manna for today, living in lack or in wilderness. And so many times, Christians, we accept the wilderness life. We stay stuck without taking that step of faith. But God is calling us today to take a step of faith. If you've got a place in your life that's been stuck in the wilderness, let go of your fear and step out in faith. You know, Satan wants you to be afraid of the storm, and he wants you to be afraid in the storm. He wants you to be afraid of the fire, and then he wants you to be afraid in the fire. He wants you to be afraid of the giants, and then he wants you to be afraid when you're confronting the giants. But our God says that when I pass through the waters, I am with you. And when I pass through the river, it will not sweep over me. And when I go through the fire, I will not feel the flame. It's not that there isn't some water to deal with. It's not that there isn't a raging river that I have to cross. It's not that there isn't a fire that might be coming into my life. It's simply that it's not going to harm me. It's not going to bother me. I won't be afraid of it. And I won't be afraid when I'm in it. Because I know that my Lord has gone before me. And he himself will fight on my behalf. Amen. Make sure you give us thumbs up, like it, share it. Yep, and uh, yeah, like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Amen. And wherever your church is, make sure you're in church this weekend. And GNO, Girls Night Out, this.